Check out our new iPhone application to keep track of your orchids. Link in the description box. Hello orchid friends! In this video there will be no blooms at all. But is it going to be interesting anyway? Yes, I think so. Because I've got so many things to update you on and I hope you will like the video. Okay, let's get started without further ado. I've got so many plants, over 20 I think. The first one is Phalaenopsis TH Pro. It has finished blooming in about, I think November, after it had bloomed many many months and now it's producing a new leaf. In the back there is Phalaenopsis Gigantia and it had received a bit too much sun during the summertime. One of the leaves got yellow, you saw that in the last update video. And now I think it's ready to come off. Let's see. Yep. Here we go. Other than that, it's doing fine. And I think the color is much better than in the last video. The leaves are really, really nice. I'm still hoping for blooms. You could surprise me, Gigantia. <laughs> okay. Let's go on. Here we have Phalaenopsis Hieroglyphica Variation Alba on the right hand side and Phalaenopsis Buena Jewel Time Sequestris on the left hand side. It's working on a new leaf. It's always busy doing something, but no blooms at the moment. That's all for these two. Now that we are done with the ones that are not doing much, we can go on to the ones in spike or in bud. This is Phalaenopsis parishi. It has two little spikes at the moment. This is the larger one. And down here is the smaller one. It's only two spikes at the moment. I hope there are more to come, like in April where it bloomed from four spikes. And the next one is Phalaenopsis Wilsoni times Bresciana. Ah, here is the spike. I'm really looking forward to the small, cute, fragrant blooms. And one of the older leaves is going to come off. And the next one is going to be Phalaenopsis stobatiana times bastiani. This is the spike, it's quite long this year. And other than that, it's working on new roots all the time, all year round. That's nice. Only one spike this time. But I'm happy that there is one spike. And the surprise of the year is this plant. I think I showed it once in my very first video. It's my oldest Phalaenopsis. It hasn't bloomed in, I think, 10, 11, 12 years, I'm not sure. And it has these weird yellowing edges on its leaves. And I don't know if these yellow edges can be a sign of magnesium deficiency as well. At least it's not typical. This spike appeared after I had started with Epsom salts. I don't know if this is a reaction on a good magnesium supply that it hadn't received for many years. I really don't know. It might be too much of a stretch. I'm just very, very, very happy. This is a small, vigorous plant. It's Phalaenopsis javanica. You might have seen it in a reporting video that I will link in the upper right corner of the screen. And it's doing fine, but it has one problem. Do you see this pale spot? It was just a pale spot and it grew and grew and grew during the last maybe four or five or six months very very slowly but lately it developed these blackish rings 
and now I'm quite sure that it's some kind of a fungal infection and since it's still growing I need to do something about it and I will cut the leaf. It's way too near by the stem. So how can I do this on camera? We need some action in this video, don't we? Please focus. I think I will cut it like this. I hope that the tissue is healthy where I cut it. The cutting surface does look healthy. I hope it will be fine. I won't seal the wound with anything. I think it will dry by itself. Here is Phalaenopsis mariae times amboinensis and it's one of those that has these strange spots that I suppose are magnesium deficiency. But the thing is that I haven't watered this plant more than I think three or four times with Epsom salts since I figured out that it could be a magnesium deficiency. And that's because I don't water very often in general. So I'm not sure if it's too early to see any effects. I think the leaves appear a bit greener, but it could be wishful thinking and these spots are still there, very apparent. I'm not sure, but what I can say is that it's producing buds and has elongated its spikes and branches, which is very, very nice. I think it is happy and I hope that the spots will disappear in the future. And two more updates since the magnesium deficiency video. The one on the left hand side still has these spottings, but it has decided to grow a little spike. It's the first spike and that is very nice. I don't know if it's an Epsom salts effect, likely not. But who knows? And the newest leaf has become quite wide and long, which is nice too. And this one is one of the ones that I repotted. It has, it has done well in the new pot. Here is a new root and not many of the old roots have died in the pot. I see one, but the other ones are doing okay, I would say. And this one has also decided to grow a new spike instead of working on the newest leaf, which is a pity. We have to wait and see. Just a few words on recycling nutrients. I strongly believe that as many nutrients as possible are recycled from older parts of the plant, from dying parts of the plant and are transferred into newer parts of the plant for them to be able to do whatever they are doing with those nutrients and minerals. For example, when I did my research for my magnesium deficiency video, I found out that there is a mechanism that enables the plant to transfer magnesium from older parts of the plants, from older leaves to new leaves. And I think the plants are very, very economical with their nutrients and with their minerals. And they don't have anything to give. They want to keep their nutrients. They don't waste them. Look at this flower spike, for example. It's completely dried. It's only fibers that are left. I think all the nutrients and minerals has been sucked out of this flower spike and it was green so there were chlorophyll molecules there was magnesium and this has been translocated to other parts of the plant I'm very sure about that and I'm sure there are similar mechanisms for other nutrients and minerals as well that's what makes most sense for me why do I even talk about this of course because of Danny's videos she did a series with blue dye 
that she applied to Phalaenopsis orchids flower spikes to dye the flowers blue and she did one experiment where she applied dye to a cutting wound on the flower spike to observe whether the dye would only travel to the flowers or also backwards into the leaves. And I think the effect of this experiment would have been way more visible if she had used the flower spike that was just about to die, where the tip would have just yellowed a little bit. I think that's the point in time where the sap is traveling backwards. And that would have been very interesting. The experiment was interesting anyway. But um, I think that's the point in time where the magic happens. <laughs> that's my take on recycling nutrients. Okay, it seems like this video is getting too long and I will divide it in two parts. I hope you're up to watching another ORCHID update video and if yes, I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!